Okay, so the download is completed, so we can kind of check that from our SSS session. And since we have the repository configured already, we can do show repo lm dash local. And you can see right here, it's our upgrade bundle. So anything that's going to be done from this point on should be done from the console so that we don't risk losing any connectivity during the whole upgrade process if you SSH or use SSS session. So let me bring up the console to the iServer and we're going to log in and again just to verify do a show repo local uh, lm local. All right, so the file is right there. Before we start, we want to disable a session timeout and make sure we don't timeout our session right in the middle of the upgrade. So terminal session dash timeout and zero. And here we can launch our upgrade and the command for that is application. Upgrade, the question mark is our upgrade bundle file name, which is right here. Let's right click to copy paste. And then we have to specify our repository, which is local. Okay, and enter. And it's asking if, uh, if you want to save the running config, it will be yes. And now it's just going to have to wait. So if you were to have multiple ICE nodes in a distributed deployment at this point, you should have uploaded all the upgrade bundles to all of the nodes to their local disk. Okay, so we don't have to deal with the file transfer during the upgrade process. So at this point, there isn't much to see or do other than watching the screen. So what I'm going to do here, since the upgrade is going to take quite a while, I'm going to pause the video and I'll come back once the upgrade is completed. Okay, so three and a half hours or so later, the ICE is finally upgraded. So let's go ahead and lock in now that we get our lock-in prompt back. So admin and then the password. And the first thing you want to do is show where you can see right here with the version of 1.2. Okay, so let's do show application status ice. And let's make sure our web interface is also back before we jumped onto the GUI. Okay, so it looks like it's still initializing. So I have to give it a, a couple more seconds here. And it looks like the web portion is up. As you can see on the background here, our web browser changed to the white background. I mean, it's kept trying until it finally connected. And we can also see here the application server is currently running. So let me close all that out. And here on the login page, let's go ahead and log in. And the first thing we see here is the new ice 1.2 interface. Although it doesn't look that much different, we can see the color scheme kind of change a little bit. And as well as the location of the menu where it used to be on the far left, it's now kind of in the middle of the page. And here you can see we still have all of our stats that we have earlier. And it looks like something has been authenticated already also, which we'll go through in a second here. But first, we're going to go through some of the config that we review before the upgrade and see the current status of those. So let's start off with the schedule backup. As you can see here, the majority of the menus are pretty much the same with the backup and restore. It's an exception where it's used to be under maintenance. Now it has its own submenu. And you can see here the schedule backup that we had configured for both configuration, which is the admin and the operational, which is the monitoring, are no longer there. If you go back to the maintenance where we configure the repository, you can see although the repository are still there for both the FTP and the LM local. And if you look at the data purging, we used to have it set to one month or 30 days. It's now has been reset back to 90 days. Okay, the other things I believe that we looked at was the alarm syslog, which should now become a alarm settings. It used to be a monitorings folder. Then that folder is now gone. And we are left with the alarm settings, which look different. And we jump over to notification. We also lost our email settings on those. Then we have the mail.latmis.com or ice at latmis.com in there. Okay, we can also look at the posture updates. Although the automatically check updates are checked. The update hasn't been run since the startup, so we can click on updates or manual updates. And one last important thing that we need to check is the Active Directory integration. I can see that it's uh, update ran successfully. So now we're going to jump to the external in the source under Active Directory. And let's hope that we are still connected. Otherwise, we might have to redo. There you go. So 
it seems like the ice 1.2 after upgrade came up and reconnect to the domain controller or the domain automatically and we're now in a good connected states so now we can go ahead and rerun our testings with all the profilings and map and dot one x authentication so let's open up let me close this this become old already so let me open up the authentication page and on the switch let's also shut no shut the phone port and the access point port which is 1314 just to force it to come back although you can see that it's already came back successfully but let's do that one more time and then on our 802.1x machine which I believe is this one right here we can lock out or lock off to force the machine authentication and there you go we got host LM Win 7 that came in on port 19 and received the wire AD lock-in and now we're gonna go and do the user authentication there you go lab minutes slash admin 1 and now it's received permit all and let's just do a quick verification for internet you can see the Google page load up immediately okay while we're still waiting for the phone and access point to come back we can move on to our guest access and let's see where we are with this machine on that we can double check on the switch and do show auth session interface fast 1019 you can see it looks like it's sitting on the URL redirect already while the other one which is our domain machine is already on permit all so there you go we're getting redirected on our test our guest test machine and while that's coming up let me go back to the sponsor and then log in to create an account with the admin one account you can see the sponsor portal even it's already changed it used to be a blue background now we've got a new 1.2 look and feel even the managed guest account so you can see the test account kind of expired so let me uh, delete that so we can create a new one with the same name with create account and all we need is the email address and that's how we configured uh, how it's uh, it's configured for the guest username leave everything at default and submit and let's go and accept the certificate and proceed and you can see the guest portal page has changed also from the blue background to the new ice 1.2 look and feel okay so username test at test.com with the uppercase o for a password so let's try that test at test.com uppercase o sign on acceptable use policy click and accept and now we have signed in successfully and we just need to re-enter the url Okay, and here we've got our cisco.com. That means we have locked in successfully. So going back to our authentication page, you can see right here, test.test.com came in and successfully authenticate and receive wire internet only. Okay, so at this point, our phone and access point should have come in as well. Let's see if we can find that. So right here, Cisco access point came in as well as the IP phone. Okay, so the profiling still works and the wire map authentication still works as well. And we have also verified already the 802.1x wire authentication as well as the wired guest lock-in. And just to finish off our video here, I just want to show you how the policy, what it looks like right now after the upgrades. So if you remember, we looked at the authentication policy, so that gets upgraded or it's pretty much stays the same actually with the LM map and the LM.1x for the wire and wireless here. So nothing's really changed for this. And now if you go over to the authorization, everything pretty much stays the same as well. Actually, we got this additional rule on top that wasn't really there before. And these are the ones that we had configured for our non-user machine, user authentication, and the guest. Okay, so the policy gets translated or moved over pretty nicely without any alteration. Okay, so we have successfully upgraded from IS-112 to version 1.2. Here we only demonstrate a standalone node upgrades, but if you have a distributed environment, you definitely want to make sure that you review the upgrade guide thoroughly. Again, let me bring that up. And you can see on the left here, there is a dedicated section for a two node deployment or a distributed deployment. 
So make sure you follow the steps as outlined in this document and make sure you understand the whole process before starting the upgrade. So now that we have the version 1.2 installed, the next video is going to go through the web interfaces and see what is new on ICE 1.2 as far as the features. Okay, and that wraps up our video on ICE 1.1 to 1.2 upgrade. You can visit our websites to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labminutes.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.